To stand up tall and bright, I want you to speak up clear and loud, bright. In a world overrun with the fake, delusional, and disingenuous, he stands as a beacon of truth. He is Abuki Cabal. Listening to a Buki Cabal. Welcome to the Abuki Cabal Show. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? <clears throat> Welcome to the show. Um, I think I'm gonna hum on this for a little bit. You know, this this topic's kind of sticking with me, sticking in my craw. You know what I'm saying because. Seems like every time that this this comes up as a discussion about, uh, you know, from educators or, you know, politicians or black men in general, um, we always get pushed back from the usual suspects. And it's certain black women and they come out forcefully, you know, they come out even more forcefully for it um, than than the uh, trans community themselves. <clears throat> or LGBTQ community, gay community, whatever, whatever you want to, you know, you want to call it. Um, but it seems like anything um, that they can use against black men, they will use it in order to um, help anybody who is is going to um, either take resources uh, from from us or. Um, will uh, align with with the, their feminist agenda, uh, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> it's not reasonable. It's not logical. But they will hum on it. And then when you say something about it, they will make you into uh, a hater of women, a hater of, of, of these alternative lifestyles. They'll make you into uh, the, the, the devil himself in order for you to shut up. And that's just a shaming tactic to get you to basically shut up. But I want you guys to, to not shut up. I want you to continue uh, to, to, um, to stand up for what you, how you were raised, uh, what, what is, is good for our communities, uh, uh, stand up for uh, proper education of our children <clears throat> to um, stop all of this exposure to sexuality and all of these things at a young age, let these kids be kids, you know, let them uh, go ahead and play and do all these things. You know, all kinds of uh, of excuses have been, been brought up. Oh, it's because of COVID. Everybody was locked in social isolation and all that. You know what? If we would have had some social isolation back when I was growing up, you know what I would have done? I would have went fishing. I would have been out playing with my friends. But see, that's not good enough now. You know, all of these things are not good enough. The, those were the things that were were socially uh, uh, acceptable and necessary uh, for all children. But now um, uh, they act like if you're not able to to go out and and um, 
do all of this, be exposed to all of the sexual things, you know, that, that you're not going to turn out right. And it's just, um, it, it's lunacy, you know, uh, allow these children to be children, uh, stop all of this, this, this craziness, you know, uh, people are afraid to come out. You have d- doctors, you know, judges, uh, people of authority are, are afraid to come out and say what a real woman is and what a real man is. And uh, this this needs to stop. Uh, it really needs to stop. And a lot of these men that are out here caping for it and, um, you know, helping these women to basically disparage, you know, us um, uh, for the, the sake of um this other community growing, you know, is crazy. And if they're so for this other community, why is it that they use it as a as a, a shaming tactic for us? Uh, anytime we we stand up as men uh, or we uh, commune with other men uh, to get things done, they call us gay. So I'm gonna rip into this, you know, and, I, I, and this is a a a, um, a Berkeley professor, you know, a person who is an <laughs> is a professor of, of higher institution uh, uh, is uh, totally aligned uh, with this, this, I don't even know what to call it, but this, this new social structure that, that, that's, uh, that's forming here. She's totally in line with that to the point to where she cannot even stand up for women's issues by themselves and say women's issues. She, she's calling them, uh, um, uh, reproductive issues. Instead of saying that these are for uh, specifically for women, she will not champion things that are for her own interest. And she is a black woman. So uh, we're going to uh, take a look at this. And this is uh, NBC did this. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going get, to get tagged. I'll probably talk through it to kind of break it up a little bit um, in order to not get tagged. So uh, forgive me for that. Uh, But we're going to uh, take a look at that and uh, see what you guys think. All righty. Okay. So uh, this is uh, Senator Josh Hawley uh, during a Senate hearing uh, accusing him of being transphobic for asking questions about whether what the professor was advocating for was women's, a woman's issue. Um, Here we go. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. Would that be women? Many women, cis women have the capacity for pregnancy. Many cis women do not have the capacity for pregnancy. Um, There are also trans men who are capable of pregnancy as well as non-binary people who are capable of pregnancy. So so this isn't really a women's rights issue, it's a... We can recognize that this impacts women while also recognizing that it impacts other groups. Those things are not mutually exclusive, Senator Hawley. Oh, so you're... So as you can see, she's, she's really, really uncomfortable with saying that these issues are specific to women and whether they identify as something other than uh, a woman, uh, say they're, you know, uh, a transitioned man who is actually a a biological woman uh, would still, uh, I guess, retain the ability to to become pregnant. Um, So that would cover them as well. Um, I don't know why that person would get pregnant because they would be, that would be counter to everything that they believe that they are, but I guess it's possible. So, um, she's trying to, uh, as you can see, she's trying to cover, uh, with, with all these other, um, gender dysphoric individuals, um, Instead of just basically saying that these are women's issues. Okay. All these other people will be covered anyway. All she has to do is just stick with, yes, these are women issues. These are women's issues. Yes. Yes. These are women's reproductive issues. That's all she has to say. Um, if you're a medical professional, you should be able to say that, yes, these are, are women's, you know, issues, you know, uh, the, the, the people that we normally deal with, uh, uh, uh forever and ever, uh, that have have birthed babies have always been women. Yes, 
Yes. Labor and delivery is for women. You know, you should be able to say that. But this woman who is has a higher education. Cannot say that these issues are specific to women. You know, we have to add in all the cysts and all these other things, and those things are irrelevant. But let's move on. View is is that the core of this this right then is about what? So um, I want to recognize that your line of questioning um, is transphobic, <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence by not. Okay, so she says that this opens up trans people to violence by actually by him actually saying that these issues are for women so that he can allocate monies or or resources towards women's health. He has to ask these questions. I think this is totally unfair um, uh, for this person to do this. And if you can't answer the questions, they should basically ask her to leave. Um, if you're not willing to to answer the questions in a realistic fashion, then we're not going to be able to entertain uh, uh, your your fantasies here. And they should have asked her to leave. So uh, uh, by not recognizing that, and let's let's let her finish here. Recognizing that. Wow, you're saying that I'm opening up people to violence by asking whether or not women are the folks who can have pregnancies? So I'm one, I want to note that one out of five transgender uh, persons have attempted suicide. So I think it's important. And what, what relevance uh, is that to, to what he's saying? That is not violence. He's not advocating violence towards them. And if they commit suicide, what are the reasons for them committing, committing suicide? I'm sure it's not because of a Senate hearing. I'm sure it's probably because of some underlying psychological issue that they may have. Uh, but for her to blanket blame this individual for or this, this uh, to, for, for advocating violence against people or, or uh, trying to get him to feel as if he may cause somebody to commit suicide because he's having a, a discussion with her about how to allocate resources for women's issues is asinine. And look who is there. This woman bucking her eyes and, you know, looking around as if she's totally confused about reality when when discussing something that is, is simple for somebody who has spent, I'm sure, you know, uh, uh, eight years or more in college. If she if she's a Ph.D., I mean, uh, if she's not, you know, she's I'm sure she's she's probably up there. If she's sitting before Congress, so she's got to be either master's level or Ph.D. level. So with all of that education, I'm sure you took biology. I'm sure you took uh, anatomy and physiology. I'm sure you took some 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 general sciences uh, to, to where you could um, be exposed to uh, the differences between male and female species throughout the planet. So I, this is just, you know, we shouldn't entertain this. And I'm going to tell you, if I was a center, I'd, I'd, I'd have her escorted out. <laughs> I, I really would, because they they as men. I think we have to stop entertaining this this nonsense. We really do. Well, let's let's finish this up here. Because of my line of questioning, because so we can't talk about it. Because denying that trans people exist and pretending not to know that they exist. I'm is denying. He never denied the existence of trans people. He's talking about issues specific to women. She brought up trans and all of these other people. He's talking about issues specific to women birth, giving birth to children, gynecological issues that are associated with birth. And the trans people exist by asking are you? you if you're talking are you? about women. Are you? Now, now she's asking him a question, but she said that he already said these things against the people, but now she's asking him a question. If he didn't say it, if he said it already, why are you asking him to basically say that these people don't exist. He never said it again. I would ask her to remove her tail from my seats and uh, let's bring some people in here who can deal with reality. We need to stop giving these people uh, advanced degrees and and uh, advanced jobs, jug, judgeships, uh, uh, any any uh, job that, that requires people to be uh, firmly affixed in reality. They should not have that job. Let's move on. Do you believe that uh, men can get pregnant? 
No, I don't think women can <laughs> so get pregnant. So you are denying that trans people like this? Thank and that leads to violence? Is this how you run your classroom? Are students allowed to question you? Absolutely. Or are they also treated like this? Where no, you, no, no, they're, they're told that to they're at opening up people to oh, violence. We have a good time in my class. You should join. Oh, I bet. You might learn a lot. Wow. I, I good job, Senator Hawley. I mean, uh, look at this, you know, this, this buck eyed individual sitting here. Uh, 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 this is supposed to be a learned in individual who is sitting up here uh, uh, who can't even hold her own against a senator who probably, I don't know if he even has as much education as she has. Definitely not, probably not in, in her, her field, but I would hate for her to uh, to come up against a, a, a physician uh, or, or a geneticist <laughs> or a biologist uh, uh, dealing with, with with some of these premises that she has uh, uh, or even a psychologist or psychiatrist dealing with some of these things, a, a person who is objectively looking at these things instead of this right here. If you're in your I mean, she's clearly in her feelings. And this is a part of that need to be right. She has an, an overwhelming need to be right. And that's why she's she's clearly shaken by this. I mean, look at her face. I mean, she looks like she's trying to stare a hole into the guy because he will not accept her uh, fallacies about gender. I would learn a lot. I've learned you, a lot. I know. This exchange. Absolutely. Extraordinary. Yep. You've referred to people. And, and see, she's being an, an absolute turd uh, um, when when dealing with with this man. No respect. You know, and being, I mean, that some of the same things that we deal with, I'm sure, you know, some of the, some of the, you know, you black men can, can relate to that, how we are talked to in the same situation when we, uh, we are asking questions, relevant questions. And when, um, you know, they are feeling, uh, um, disrespected by these questions, then they start to, to, uh, to talk to us in this, in this, this manner, the same manner that she just talked to him. So um, that's just crazy. Now, you know, some people would, would take issue with uh, me saying that, um, you know, it's black women who are always supporting this thing. But I'm going to play something else here, you know, uh, and this is a young lady who feels pretty much the same way. And I want you to listen to what she has to say about what she has encountered now before she does it, I'm going to tell you every time that I brought this up on Facebook and whatnot, other places I'm attacked by hordes of black women who come down uh, as if I have, have, have uh, tried to, to do harm to some, some woman, some, some uh, hapless woman who can't protect herself. Um, or, or they'll say, why am I even concerned about these issues? Uh, as if I have no no agency over over the way that I think my uh, what I feel like is a problem in the community. So it, here you you find yourself in a situation where a man is attempting to uh, to to uh, to negotiate his world, and he's constantly being battered and bashed down by uh, these women who claim that they need protection, who claim that that uh, that that we have abandoned them because we are less than. Uh, than a man. We are, we're not strong enough to handle them, all manner of things that they say. And I reject all of that. I'm just not going to uh, bash my head against an immovable object uh, trying to change its course. So I'm going to let you listen to uh, this young lady. She is a comedian. She's beautiful. And uh, I just want you to hear what she has to say about her encounters with other black women with regard to uh, this issue. Go back to back with videos. But I feel like there's something on my heart that I have to say. Now, I hate to go back to something that I posted, I made some time ago, but I have to revisit that for a moment to give you motherfuckers an example of what the fuck I'm talking about. So I made a post, made a video about black women being partially responsible for the rapid growth of homosexuality in our community. And a lot of women on different platforms disagreed. Some agreed, and then a lot of them disagreed, and all they saw was that I was trying to say that black women was responsible for a man taking dick up his ass, and that's not what the fuck I was saying. What I was saying was, is that we support that bullshit. We support that more than we support true masculinity. 
community. We support that. You understand? A recent video went viral, you know, where the money was at, where the money was at, you know, that bullshit. And all you can see in the comments and all you can hear is a bunch of our fucking women applauding that type of shit. So y'all don't understand that we can be enslaved mentally. Has to do with nothing to do with physically. I'm talking about being mentally enslaved. Because a lot of us do not see the bigger picture. And what I'm driving at is the fact that they want to control the narrative. And they want to remove the threat. See, a black man and all of his masculinity and his strength and what he possessed at one point in time. They want to remove the threat because it makes them comfortable. You understand? You think that this nation feels comfortable in their fucking skin? To know that our men still possess the strength and the knowledge and no they don't want that and so another another way to remove that is to is to present the image of femininity and call masculinity true masculinity toxic you motherfuckers that's all y'all doing is sitting around and buying into this bullshit this is their fucking shit this is not our shit you understand? We're fucking kings and queens. We're royalty for God's sake. So I want to address the millennials. I want to address the young men that's coming up right now in this generation. Because it's not a lot of black women that are giving you support. So I want to say this. Your masculinity is not a threat to me. It's needed. It's wanted. It's desired. Okay? You don't have to put on a dress. You don't have to put on lipstick and heels and prance around on fucking social media for likes, comments, and views to be supported by me. You understand? You don't have to. I support you. I support you being who you are, what you were called to be. The truth be told, we got more of our men thinking that the only way that they can be accepted by us, the only way that we're going to support their life and, and make sure that they got food on their table and to feed their family and to have a thriving business is to be in the likeness of me. In the likeness and the image of femininity. Your masculinity is needed, my brother. Your masculinity is needed. Let me say it again. Make these motherfuckers uncomfortable. Make them uncomfortable. Make them fucking uncomfortable. Indeed. Make them uncomfortable. Indeed. Okay. Um, that's that's kind of where we are. Um, we are, are in a place to where uh, we are being basically pushed out of our position as leaders in the community um, by, again, the usual suspects. The usual suspects. They continue to do what they do, uh, which is to bash us and and to to uh, lead us down all kinds of, of unproductive paths. Um, they are are out here pushing for more funding of this 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 uh, transitioning uh, lifestyle and these these alternative lifestyles. They're also uh, t you know uh, championing you know, for young women to not, not get married, anything that is, is akin to, uh, normalcy. Uh, you find that the majority of black women out here are pushing against that and trying to move away from that. So a guy enters the DM. Oh, he asks hang on me just to please give him advice pertaining to a situation that he's currently dealing with. Basically. He Sorry about that. So, um, yeah, we you know, we're having these issues where uh, these women are are basically, like I said, championing all these issues, siphoning resources, and um, uh, much needed attention away from black men's issues, uh, black boys' issues. Now, immediately you saw her go out and she started talking about how many uh, trans uh, people were, uh, you know, were committing suicide and whatnot. Um, that number is dwarfed by the number of black male suicides. Um, that number is dwarfed 
uh, 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 the number of, of murders of, of, uh, of black men dwarfs the number of black trans people murdered. Um, so, you know, if you look at the numbers across the board, I mean, uh, and Dr. Tia San Johnson has, has, uh, has addressed this. Um, Gigi has addressed this. Um, Dr. Neil has just addressed this. Uh, these are numbers dwarf even uh, uh, the black woman's numbers as far as the need for education, um, for protection from uh, from uh, sexual assault, um, the instances of, of sexual assault, um, uh, the the uh, instances where uh, um, domestic violence is is initiated <clears throat> on black men is uh, is more to the side of of women, black women initiating. But that's never talked about. All you hear about is the aggressive monster black man out here who is oppressing everybody. We oppress the trans people. We oppress white women. We oppress uh, uh, black women. Uh, we keep black women from from getting jobs. We keep black women from getting educated. Uh, we are somehow um, we have all of this power in a system where all of the statistics say that we are uh, at a deficit. So when you ask them about these these facts and these statistics, they always deny them. They never want to address those statistics. And that goes for um, uh, th those in, in higher levels of academia. That goes for, for the ones who are out here uh, championing uh, uh, these these alternative lifestyles, uh, the, the feminist, all of them do not want to talk about the facts. But I I'm telling you guys that what we need to do is we need instead of sitting back and watching these women go out and put their issues on the forefront and put all of these alternative lifestyles on the forefront of, of, of um, um, uh, the social agendas for politics on one particular party, the Democratic Party, um, then what we need to do as men is, is just like we did the Million Man March. We need to show up a million of us strong at the Democratic National Committee with an agenda. Now, I don't know. I may be wrong, but I've never I've never seen a million black women show up there to get their, you know, get their paws on some on some uh, some some resources and to champion uh, LGBT rights and, and, and feminist rights. I've never seen that. So I think that that might that might uh, uh, get us what we want. So instead of saying, OK, we're just not going to support this this party where we have a have have a voice, then what we need to do is we need to go off in there a million strong and take it over. That sounds a lot better than saying I'm not going to vote at all or I'm going to go over and I'm going to support uh, the Republicans who offer you nothing who have offered you nothing for decades. So with that, I think we have a chance uh, at actually moving uh, the needle forward. If we, like I said, show up in numbers and show uh, uh, these statistics, start making them deal with, with the, 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 the progression of the, the downfall of our community ever since, you know, Monaghan and the current commission. And we lay that out in front of them and make them explain how they've been sending all this money to these other groups, yet the need is clearly with us and our children. So with that, I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut it off and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it was it was very comical to me. Uh, uh, I enjoy seeing uh, uh, these young ladies go out and make fools of themselves uh, when championing these these asinine um, um, uh, causes, you know, that have nothing to do with them, has nothing to do with them. They can't even stick to causes that are, are exclusively uh, beneficial to themselves. They have to always be on somebody else's bandwagon, always. 
You know, so again, guys, do not, you know, don't try to change their minds. Don't uh, don't don't get in front of that, you know, that that immovable object trying to to convince them when they start running their mouths. You basically go the other way. Don't deal with them. What we need to do is we need to get on on our business and we need to start working on doing what I said, and that is taking over uh, the political momentum from uh, these these usual suspects who have who have basically taken over uh, um, uh, one political party and taken us down um, a social um, bottomless pit. But with that, I'm going to end it. And uh, like I said, hey, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Uh, I'm going to hum on this for a little bit because there are some issues that I just got to cover because this 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 is just actually it's, it's just kind of irritating me a little bit because I keep hearing all of this mess and they keep coming for me. So I'm going to I'm going to keep putting this mess out here. Well, not mess. It's good content. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, have a good day. Come on.